بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of توقل or the meaning of توقل by Shaykh Islam Ibn Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala we reached the portion of the treaties where the Imam said was talking about the levels of Tawakkal and just for the sake of revision that a Tawakkal true Tawakkal on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as the ulama define it is i'timad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab it is strictly putting one's trust in Allah and doing actions, making the efforts to achieve that end, to treat, to achieve that goal or what have you. And we gave many countless examples in the other sittings. So the third thing Ibn al-Qayyum, he mentioned, he said the third level, see these are the levels of Tawakkul, he said that the heart is firmly grounded upon Tawakkul based upon Tawheed. So he said, since a servant's tawakal will not be sound until his tawheed is correct, indeed the reality of tawakal is the attainment of tawheed by the heart. So as long as his heart contains connections with shirk, then his tawakal will be weak and defective. And in accordance with the purity of his tawheed will be the soundness of his tawakal. So this is very important to show us the importance of tawheed, and this is why that you find, especially in this time, that Ahlul Sunnah is so severe against those people who make who take Tawheed lightly. Those groups, those sects, those individuals who say Tawheed is and Aqidah is not so important, or Tawheed and Aqidah are not mentioned in the Quran, or Aqidah is not in the Quran, or those there's no there was nothing known as Aqidah in the Quran. All of these kind of statements. This is why you find Ahlul Sunnah severe in speaking out against individuals who make uh, statements such as this because it shows their ignorance and it shows their deviance from the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. Those great Imams, these of course are later day Imams like Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and Shaykh Islam Ibn Al Qayyim, but they carried the banner of the Salaf. They carried the same banner and were upon the same methodology as the Salaf of this Ummah. And the Salaf of this Ummah, there are countless, countless statements of the Salaf regarding Tawheed and the importance of Tawheed. All, going all the way back to Abu Hanifa and before Abu Hanifa, statements talking about the Rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the, uh, even the, the Uluhiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that all worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, of course, countless books of the Salaf after Imam uh, Abu Hanif, after his time, when they began to compile books, those later generations, uh, regarding Aqidah, countless books on Iman and uh, Aqidah or Ittiqad Ahl Sunnah by Al Alaqai, and great Imam uh, Sunnah who spoke about the issue of Aqidah. So, the point, going back to the point that I was mentioning here, or Shaykh al Islam was mentioning, is that true tawakkul cannot be attained except with true tawheed. Meaning that a person, if the more deficient they are in tawheed, the more they're nuts in their tawakkul. They, you can't have sound, sound tawakkul because you don't really know who Allah is. If you're committing shirk, and if you're making mistakes in your tawheed, or your tawheed is weak, your understanding of tawheed is weak, then, or even your iman is weak, then you're not truly making tawakkul on Allah. This has a, a relationship with your Iman and a relationship with your Tawheed and your understanding of the religion. Then he said, so whenever a, sl a servant turns towards other than Allah, then this diversion will take one, uh, take away one of the parts of his heart. So his reliance upon Allah will be decreased in accordance with the size of that part of his heart. This is what led some people to think that Tawakkul will not be correct unless the means, the Asbab, are rejected. This is true. But by rejecting them with the heart, not with the limbs. So tawakkul is not correct except by rejecting the causes with the heart. 
whilst attaching one limbs to them. So he will be both separated from them and connected to them. And Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the most high knows best. Then uh, Shaykh al-Islam, he mentioned the fourth level. He said that the heart relies and depends upon Allah and is at peace with him. This is a part of Tawakkul, the fourth level of Tawakkul. So that it is not disquieted and disturbed by the means and does not depend and find peace with them. But rather he dispels reliance upon them from his heart and fills it with dependence upon and peace with the one who brings them about. So this is very important that we understand that our heart is not dependent upon those asbab. Meaning if you strove to get a job, you don't put all of your heart and say, well, I strove to get the job and your heart as if it's because it can become a type of worship which then a person can fall into shirk if they put all of their heart into the asbab. But rather, put your heart with the, and your trust with the one who created those means, who created the asbab, and that's Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is what Shaykh al-Islam is basically is saying here, is that we should put our trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should take action to the best of our ability to complete actions, to complete, to attain the things we're trying to achieve. But part of that tawakkul is that we rely and our hearts are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. Then the sign of this is that he does not care when they come or go. His heart is not perturbed by that. It does not tremor when those he dislikes arrive. Rather, his reliance is in Allah, and he is at peace with him and depends upon him. Allah protects him from fearing them or desiring them. So his condition is that of a person who is being sought by a great enemy, whom he does not have the power to repel. So he sees an open fortress and its master allows him to enter it, then, and then uh, locks its gate for his benefit. And he can see his enemy outside the fortress. So for his heart to tremor and fear his enemy in this situation has no meaning. Likewise, one who is given a durham, durham by a king, which is a type of currency, but it is stolen for him, from him. So the king says to him, I have its like many times over, so do not worry. Whenever you come to me, I will give you many times its worth from my treasure stores. So when he knows that the king is speaking truthfully, and he knows him to be fully reliable, and he trusts him fully, and he knows that his treasure stores are full, then his having lost, that will not grieve him. SubhanAllah. This is a beautiful likeness that uh, Shaykh al-Islam is, is giving us. Letting us know that the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his bounties are endless. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from perfection and he is our razak, he's the provider and the sustainer. So if we put our trust totally in him and realize that all the treasures are with him, that even if you lost some wealth in this life, or you made a, a business decision and you you tried but you didn't succeed in that you made effort you didn't put your trust fully in that you put your heart your heart and your trust was with the law because you know that the bounties are for him and that if he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala he can replace what you lost one million times fold then the sheikh said this has also been shown by the example of a baby who's being breastfed in his level of dependence and reliance and his having satisfied with the breast of his mother when he knows no other. So his heart does not turn in the slightest to anyone else. Just, just as one of those with awareness said, the person having to walkle is just like a baby. He does not know of anything to turn to besides the breast of his mother. Likewise, the person having to walkle has none whom he turns to and relies upon except his Lord, the one free of all imperfections. This is a beautiful, beautiful uh, similitude that Shaykh Islam mentioned that the person who fully uh, relies and knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this goes back to Tawheed because when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly you know not that it's on your tongue not that you're speaking about it not that you're giving da'wah about it not that you're but that you truly know it in your heart and you truly illustrate that on your tongue and your limbs you have true Iman strong Iman and trust, and true trust in Allah, in your heart, then nothing can take that away. That is where that Iman comes in. And that's where that strict reliance, uh, Iqtimad al-Allah, 
That's that true ikkimat of Allah, putting your trust in your affairs with Allah. And we ask Him all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.